Hello world, this is Random Fix, and if you have your Catalyst monitor not ready, you definitely want to check out this video. And this is going to be a series of videos on the number one issue that people have when they're trying to pass an emissions test, and it's going to be actually getting the Catalyst monitor ready. And there's a couple of different ways of going around this particular issue. To use any of the techniques that I'm going to be covering in the video here, you want to make sure you get yourself one of these OBD2 scanners and they're under $20 they're really great to have they work on any vehicle 1996 and newer check out the links below in the video description the number one tip I have for getting a catalyst monitor ready is to drive at high speeds over 55 miles an hour preferably on the freeway avoid using cruise control or the AC and be constant with your speed and the longer you drive the hotter the catalyst will get the better chance of you getting the catalyst monitor ready and you want to make sure that there's no pending codes as you're doing this drive cycle if there's a pending code this will stop you from actually completing the drive cycle so what you want to do is you want to go to your uh, DTCs which is diagnostic trouble codes and you want to make sure there's no pending codes if there was something pending there'd be a P in front of it and if there is a pending code it will keep that monitor from setting so make sure everything else is cleared and drive it long and drive it constant and you will get that monitor ready if you're still not able to get that monitor ready after about 300 miles which is a little excessive and you've done everything the right way you may need to go ahead and look at some other alternatives which I'll definitely have a few at the end of the video for you guys the catalyst monitor is second to last when getting ready other than the EVAP monitor. If your catalyst monitor is not getting ready, you may have a pending P420 or P430 code, which is normally an indication that you have a very poor functioning catalytic converter. And there's going to be a couple of things you can do to go ahead and go around this. A, you can go ahead and delete the code and try to do one long drive cycle for the catalyst monitor to get it ready and that way you don't have to overcome the pending code some of the remedies that we have can be just be pour down the the gas tank and they may be able, to be able to help you pass and there's better solutions if you don't mind doing a little bit of work I'm going to cover those three generally really quick with you and if you guys want to see the videos of those actually happening please check out the description box below as I record them, I'll leave them down there for you. So this is the catalyst on my vehicle. And it's got one catalyst for my four-cylinder camera here. If you have a V6, you're more like more than likely going to have two. Some cars even have four catalysts on there. And they're very, very expensive to buy. Especially if you live in a state like California. They may be super expensive. So a couple of things that I like to do is... When I do get a, a P420, P430 code or any kind of catalyst deficiency code is I try to get the easiest remedies done first before I have to replace a $1,500 part. And one of the very first ones, and I have a video on this and this does work, it's Cataclean. This is very easy. Check out the video on the full description of that. Number two thing that we can do is we can pull out the spark plug here, right here. And we can actually try to spray into the catalyst as it's going down. And that is really easy and it's not too uh, labor intensive where you're going to end up having to remove the whole catalyst. You could also remove the catalyst and clean it in a solution. I've never had to do it, but it's possible. You can use lacquer thinner, you could use soapy water, and you could also use vinegar. So that's another option. And then the other option you can do is you can actually go underneath the vehicle and the first oxygen sensor here is going to be the upstream oxygen sensor since it's above the catalyst here. It's upstream. Then there's a downstream oxygen sensor and what you can do is you can actually go and there's a couple of tricks to that. I'll have that in a separate video and that's what actually tells your, your computer that your catalyst is bad so if you can change the readings on that particular sensor you're gonna have a better chance of 
actually getting this vehicle to pass. So those are my couple of different uh, cheats on passing the emissions test. So check out everything in the video box below. Make sure you watch the video at the end of the actual smog drive cycle being completed in a very short time. Thanks for watching. Please leave your comments and your questions below. If this is the first time you guys are checking out the channel, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button right here and ring that notification bell as well. So anytime I post a video that's aimed at saving you time and money, then you guys will get notified. Have a great day and thanks for watching. You know, if you guys have any comments, hit the subscribe button and I really appreciate your continued support.